Hey guys, many of you keep asking me on our Discord group if I use uh, any kind of automation or scanning tools to find trade ideas. And I keep giving you guys the same answer that I like to scan my charts manually because I like to stay in touch with the personality of my stocks. And by going through each of the stocks manually, I know exactly what's happening to which stock. So since I do it every day, if on any particular day I see some kind of anomaly, something out of the ordinary, it catches my attention. Uh, so that's my personal preference. Having said that, you also may know that I am a, a software engineer by profession and I was in corporate America for like last 20 years as an architect and senior programmer. And I continue to, to code. I haven't given up on coding at all. In fact, I, uh, in the small town where I live, uh, we don't have uh, services like Uber or Lyft. So I launched my own version of Uber here in my town and I coded the entire thing myself. So Uber has 32,000 software engineers. I did the entire app myself and I did it in three months. And the app is running, up and running, and uh, we have already given about 130 rides in the last uh, two and a half months. So I'm a through and through programmer. So having said that, so now the reason I, I brought this up is because first you must be wondering, like I'm a programmer and on the, on the other hand, I'm telling you don't use automation. So I would just want to clarify that I not saying do not use automation. I'm saying use the biggest computer is right here. So never let go of that computer. Use that computer and then use other things, automation that which you call to supplement your knowledge or make your life easier. So today I'm gonna to show you how I use uh, something called chat GPT, which you may have heard of, to automate my trading life. And I'm going to show you a really small sample a small part where and how easy it is to write a simple scanner which will spit out uh, trade ideas for a bull call spread. If you are if you have read my book or you are in my, our Discord group, you know that we only trade bull call spreads and bear put spreads based on the market conditions. So I'll show you how I can generate a scanner for the platform that I prefer, which is Think or Swim and do that. Uh, I have also been experimenting with ChatGPT for several months now, and I have been able to successfully create indicators, scanners uh, for platforms like TradingView, stock charts. Uh, I've even been able to create automations inside a tool called Zapier, which I use. Uh, so it's just amazing. ChatGPT is amazing. I know we keep saying that, you know, AI has created all this hype, stock market, all the tech stocks are going up because of AI. Yes, there, yes, there is always a negative side to anything that new that comes, but there is also a positive side. So let's just focus on the positive side. So I'm gonna share my screen now. You may not know this, that Google also has their own version of ChatGPT called BARD, B-A-R-D. You can go to bard.google.com and that kind of, it works like ChatGPT. They are not exactly the same. I sometimes prefer ChatGPT. If I can get an answer on ChatGPT, I try BARD. But the technology is very similar. So, so to go to ChatGPT, just search for it. Or you go to chat.openai.com. I'm gonna search for ChatGPT. Obviously the first link is ChatGPT. Let's go there. It'll, if you have never gone to the site, Register, create, create a login, it's free, and you will be on this screen. Now, I will show you an example of how I can write a really simple scanner and how can I can refine it. So by no means this is going to give you an, an exact scanner that I use for my own purposes, but it'll give you an idea how I go about it. So I'm gonna ask it, think and treat you know, ChatGPT as your friend. So you can say, can you write a think 
script. Think script is the language used by think or swim. Think script scan for me, which finds bullish trade setups. Here is the criteria I want you to keep in mind. Number one, Bollinger Bands should not be stuck inside Kempner channels. Number two, RSI should be below 30 in the last seven days, but now should be higher than 30 and moving up. Three, um, price candles should be showing higher highs and higher lows. Let's just start with that. Let's see what it does. So in just seconds, it gave me some code, okay? It even gives you the explanation of the code, but um, since I'm a programmer, I can quickly go through this code. It really, really helps you if, you're, if you are slightly, you know, if you are technically inclined, you know, coding. So I can quickly go through this. Okay, it's checking RSI 14, then it's finding the RSI here, calculating the RSI, it even puts comments for you. It's finding out upper Bollinger Band value, lower Bollinger Band value, and then it's checking for condition one. Bollinger Band's not stuck inside Keltner channel. <clears throat> so it's finding the Keltner channel upper value, KC upper, KC lower, and then it's simply doing a check if BBs are inside KCs. Okay, that's good. It's also checking for my RSI condition, which I said. RSI below 30 in the last seven days, which means it was oversold and currently rising. So it's checking for that. Then it's checking for higher highs and higher lows. So it's all it's doing is I can see here that it's only checking if today's price is higher than yesterday's price and today's low is higher than yesterday's low. You can always make changes to it. You can make it high greater than high one and high one is greater than high two. So now you're checking for price moving up for the consistently for the last three days. You can do all that stuff. So, and then, so, and then finally it's saying uh, plot the scanned results. So I didn't even ask it to do that, but it's actually going to put a Boolean, it's an arrow up indicator, a green arrow up, wherever it finds uh, these conditions on a chart. And then it gives you some explanation. That's great, I, I love it. Now, the thing is, if you have never written a scan, how do you incorporate that inside Think or Swim as a scan? So let's ask ChatGPT. Can you give me the steps to create a TOS scan from this code that you have given me? Okay, it's doing something. Whoa, so it gave me a lot of instructions. Okay, so let's follow the instructions as if I don't know how to do it. So let's copy this code first that it gave us. Copy code. It looks fine to me. We'll find out. Open Thinkorswim, go to the scan tab. So go to Thinkorswim, go to the scan tab, and I'm already on option hacker. You can go to stock hacker option and create a new scan. Click on the add study filter. So I'm going to add filter, study. Then it says choose custom in the study filter. So I'm going to go to study filter and choose custom. Okay. So it brings up this screen, which has this condition wizard and think script editor. Now it gave us some code. So we have to go to think script editor. Let's see what it tells you. Uh, paste the think script code. Okay. So I'm going to paste, uh, delete this, paste the code that I copied here. And then it's telling me create a name for it and just run the scan. OK, 
okay it's just giving me a few more steps but pretty much that's what it means now if you go back one thing i will point out is that chat gpt hardly ever gives you especially when you're generating code like hardcore uh, code it hardly ever gives you code that works in the first shot so that's where if you are a programmer it really helps you because you can just quickly go through the code and fix it yourself but uh, let's say you're a newer you are new to coding or you've never done programming you can ask chat gpt to help you fix that too so let's try that not it doesn't always work let's try that if it we can fix it so i'm getting this error at the bottom called invalid parameter atr length so let's tell chat gpt that we, i'm getting this error invalid parameter atr length so it's saying i apologize it's very nice by the way I apologize for the confusion. It seems there was an error in the think script code. The error message blah is because I mistakenly included the ATR length parameter in the Keltner channel calculation. So now it's apparently giving me a fixed version of the code. So let's copy that and see if that code works. Okay, so, oh wow. It did fix it. So now there are no errors. At the bottom, you don't see any errors. So let's just click OK. And then just do a scan. Let's see what it comes up. OK, so the scan gave me three stocks. Now, given this is outside market hours, so the results may not, uh, you may not see enough results. But let's let's uh, do this. I'm gonna save this scan, save scans query. I'll call it chat GPT full scan, okay? Save. And the cool thing about think or swim is now you go to charts. And in your watch list section on the left side, you can actually pull up a scan and the output of the scan becomes a watch list for you. So let's find that scan. Uh, chat gpt bull scan so i pull that now the results will actually appear here and i'll show you why i have done that so now you have charts here results here you click on this and that chart will open up in front of you now let's look at the chart and actually use your brain to confirm if chat gpt did what you asked it to do so let's pull up this chart aap it did Check the RSI condition, which is great because it found a stock which was oversold on 9-12, which is three days ago. And now it's going up above 30. So that condition is matches, the condition matches, that's great. Second condition we gave it was the Bollinger Band. I know it's kind of crowded, let me zoom. So you see the red and green lines, they are the Bollinger Bands and the gray lines are the Keltner channels. So I told it, make sure Bollinger Bands are not stuck inside Keltner channels. And I've explained in my book, why is that so? Because once you, once these bands get stuck inside the channels, you get this action, it's sideways choppy action with no price movement. And since we are directional traders, we want price movement. So we want to avoid stocks that are stuck in this phase, a sideways movement phase. That's what this criteria catches. So great, I mean, it just, uh, it, the scanner works, that's great. So let's try to refine it and see if uh, we can make it better. So I'm gonna ask it, um, can you make sure that the stock doesn't have earnings coming up in the next 30 days? See, that that's the nice thing about ChatGPT that it has context. And what that means is once you start a conversation with it, you can, whenever you say something that I told it that add an earnings check, it remembers what I've been talking to it about. So it will take my original code, add this new condition in that code. So you don't have to start over again. 
So let's see if this code, uh, first I'm gonna just gonna uh, manually eyeball it and see if it did that. So did it check for earnings? So it looks like it added this code here. Bullish setup and not has earnings within 30 days. How did that find out? Okay, it did check here. Get next earnings date. It did add that check. ChatGPT will generate 80% of working code for you. And then you can always refine it. But the thing is, you know, when, when you start with something new, the getting over that inertia is the biggest challenge. Once you have some base code working, you can always refine it. To end this video, let's go on to the second part where I will tell ChatGPT to create an indicator for me. So an indicator is something you can add to a chart and it will plot arrows for you. So if you're, if you're creating an indicator to find bullish setups, it will put a green arrow showing that this is the spot where you need to buy a stock. So all I need to do is tell ChatGPT, can you create a TOS indicator for me from this code? Let's say give us some code. In good faith, I'll have to assume that this code works. So let's just copy that. Go to Thinkorswim. And uh, icon is for studies. Click on edit study. You can, you can click create and paste that entire code that ChatGPT gave you. And it says script is automatically updated. So no errors, that's great. Let's just click OK. It called the indicator new study. You can always rename that. Let's just click OK and see what happens. So I have this Apple chart pulled up for you right now. Look how cool is it. The, the indicator is now drawing these green arrows for you. Wherever the conditions that you give uh, the indicator, if those conditions match, it starts drawing arrows for you. And you can, you can see that. So look, look at this on 8.21 with Apple, the RSI is beginning to come out of oversold and that's where it's putting all these indicators for. That's where you would go bullish. The, another example right, right here, 8.14, RSI coming out of over, oversold, it's telling you to go bullish. So but how amazing is this piece of technology. Um, I wish when I was starting my programming career, I had access to something like this. I mean, I don't know what I would have done. But anyway, I'm not too old and I have access to this now. So who knows what, uh, where I can take this. So hope that helps. Please use your creativity, create indicators, do whatever you want and share with me if you uh, make something cool. I would love to see what, what people come up with. Thank you.